In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can make a feature or an object in your image stand out by using a blurred effect on the background. So if we have a look at these two images, you can see in this one here that the background is quite clear, um, as well as the foreground, so our eyes naturally have a, a bit of a glance around the page, whereas in this um, example here that's had the effect added to it, with the background and other areas of the picture blurred, uh, our eyes are drawn towards the subject area that's still in focus. So this is the little effect that we're going to look at how to reproduce today. So we're using GIMP, which is a free image editing program that you can download online for free. We're going to begin by using the free select tool and I'm going to draw carefully around the outside of my object. Um, now as you come around you can click and hold down as I'm doing here or for my more fine-tuned adjustments um, what you can actually do is go through and click and make a series of small points. Now I'm going to go through and fine-tune this soon so I'm just making a bit of a rough selection for now. Um, if I need to, it's quite handy using a scroll mouse with this program because I can, um, can hold down control and scroll which will allow me to zoom in to a particular point or zoom out uh, to have more fine adjustments. So coming back up to where I started, I'm just going to click and we can see we've got our selection here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on a quick mask and that's down at the bottom left hand corner of your um, window and you can see that that's masked out all of the area that has not been selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a paintbrush tool with the foreground colour as black and it's going to allow me to go through and as you see me drag across here it's going to fine tune the selection that we've got. Now being that I can hold down control and zoom right in that really gives you a lot of fine, tune, uh, fine tuning power. It does mean however that you'll probably need to change the scale of your brush um, so that as you come through you can make those um, small adjustments. For this particular project, uh, you probably don't need to have super fine um, selection around your object, um, but obviously the, the neater and clearer you can make it, the better it's going to look. So I'm just going to go ahead now and fine tune this selection and we will catch up shortly. Okay, so you may have seen earlier when I made a little bit of an error, what I was able to do was to um, come over to my um, palette over here, my foreground and background colour. If I change the colour to white, what that actually allows me to do is to um, effectively paint back the selected area. So as you can see now by using the white, I'm painting back and adding back um, to the selection. Likewise, if I click on this uh, little reverse tool, I can come back and continue building on that mask. So a little bit rough, but it will give us the idea. Now as I go through this time and click on the toggle quick mask, we can hopefully see that the selection is a lot tighter around our uh, selected subject area here. 
You can see probably down here there's a little area that I haven't correctly worked with and that's probably useful to know as well because what you could do is if you start with a mask you could actually have two or three different subjects that aren't linked together um, that have added a mask to it so you could have two or three objects selected to remain in focus while you change the actual background Right, so the last thing for us to really do now is to take our object which we've selected and invert it. So rather than having the main focus of our image selected, by coming up to select and invert, it's going to change the selection so everything else uh, is now selected instead. We're going to click on filters and come down to blur and the blur we're going to use is the Gaussian blur. Now this may take a bit of experimenting on your part um, but for this particular image I like to use around about um, 20. Uh, this uh, is usually locked so if you're changing it it should change both the horizontal and vertical at the same time. Okay, Once we've clicked OK it's applying that to the image and you can see it's quite a subtle effect but it certainly makes that um, key focus stand out. Now to remove uh, what's affectionately nicknamed in GIMP the marching ants which shows us our current selection we are going to go up to select and none and there we have it our edited picture with the Gaussian blur background and the uh, key focus um, still nice and clear. You can see here the area where I haven't gone over the mask as well as I could have. So taking that extra little bit of time is really worth it. Um, whereas around the face here it's quite clear and gives quite a crisp effect. Worth taking the time. Um, hope you like this little effect. Quite a neat little um, trick to add to your collection. Thanks for watching.